This video covers an Arduino uh, lab stability analysis and uh, some methods or strategies for doing tuning with the, the lab. Okay, so this is our Arduino lab, a, a photo of it. Uh, we're going to be heating. Okay, so this is our uh, heater and our temperature sensor. Okay, a, a, tr a thermistor. Um, and so we have a transistor for the heater and then a thermistor for the temperature sensor. And uh, we can adjust uh, the heating rate or the voltage uh, to the heater and uh, try to maintain uh, temperature. Okay, so we want to try to determine um, at what range of KC value our, our controller gain. Our controller gain, what is an upper limit and what would be a lower limit? Uh, to keep this thing stable, okay, to keep a, a P-only controller stable. And then as a next step, we're also going to uh, try to get the best tuning, okay, for our controller. Let's say we were going for 10% overshoot and uh, a, a settling time of a, of a certain amount. Um, we would uh, then try to uh, get shape this this closed loop performance to be able to get uh, meet those those qualifications for the best tuning. Okay, so let's um, let's just go to the uh, the course website and uh, just review which ones we're going to be addressing with this. Uh, okay, so if you go to apmonitor.com process control course, and then we're going to go over to the physical control lab. This is the Arduino uh, lab project, and uh, if you look at the lab description. Um, so we're going to be covering in this one, we're going to be doing um, the third part of this performance stability analysis to determine the range of KC values for which a P-only controller is expected to go unstable. Um, and then seven, uh, we're going to talk about how to tune the controller in Simulink first. So you can just do it in simulation and then uh, be able to, to apply those new tuning parameters and test them out with with the Arduino board. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to use the Arduino board to do the tuning. You can do that in simulation instead. Okay, so let's go back to um, back to this. Uh, what we're going to do is is set up um, within MATLAB or uh, Simulink. We're going to set up our our block diagram, and uh, we're going to have our process model here. Okay, and uh, so just this, this simple uh, feedback loop. And then we're going to have a P-only controller first. And, uh, and then just continue to increase uh, the KC value until the, the response okay, to a step change. This is, might be an ideal uh, response. And, you know, the, maybe the best tuning possible. But we want to find out um, where this thing, you know, if you increase the gain. Okay, P only might have some, some offset. Um, and as I continue increasing that KC value, I'm going to increase the oscillation until I might have a sustained oscillation. That's the stability limit. And then if I increase it further, then that oscillation is going to uh, continue to grow. Okay, so that is an unstable system. Um, this is the stability limit, and this would be a stable system. Okay, so we want to find, as we increase KC, uh, going down where that limit is for the stability. And we can do that with, um, with Simulink. Okay, um, so let's just go into uh, open up Simulink. So I'm going to open up MATLAB, first of all, and then um, we'll go ahead and and then uh, just create, uh, so open up Simulink just by typing Simulink at the command prompt. Okay, and then uh, start dragging in blocks. All right, so MATLAB is uh, starting up here and I'll go ahead and type Simulink and that'll bring up a the Simulink, uh, the window there. And then the first thing I'll need to do is just create a new um, worksheet or a, a, a model in Simulink and I'll do that just by by selecting this this new tab new model right here okay and that'll bring up just a blank uh, blank model and uh, we're just going to drag some pieces over here to 
to create that block diagram. Okay, so I'll make this just a little bit bigger. And uh, the first one um, that we'll get is a step. Okay, so we want a, a step change in our input. Now it doesn't matter how high this step goes. Okay, so if it's if it's unstable for a step of one, it's also going to be unstable for a step of ten. Okay, these are linear systems, so it doesn't matter how big the the step is. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need is a summation. Okay, so I'm going to put a sum in here, and uh, let me hit the control plus, and so I'll just zoom in a little bit, and 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 so we can see this just a little bit uh, better on the screen. Okay, so I have a plus and a plus. I need to change one of those to a minus. If I double click on it, I'll change the second plus to a minus. And then I have a plus and minus here. And uh, I'll, I'll drag in a PID controller. And in this case, I don't want to put, for the stability analysis, we typically don't put limits on the upper and lower bounds, even though the voltage is going to be limited to uh, 0 to 255 millivolts. Um, we'll just leave those off for the stability analysis. Okay, so um, and create a P-only controller as well. So the next thing I need is a transfer function that's going to um, simulate my Arduino device. And in this case I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say the gain is 0 0.1 and the time constant is 50 seconds. Okay, so I just made up some numbers. Uh, for my Arduino device, and I also need to put in the delay as well. Okay, so this is going to be a transport delay. And so this is my first order plus dead time model that I'm putting into uh, my system. And I'll say that uh, maybe there was 10 seconds of time delay. Okay, and then the last thing I need is a scope. And it's just going to allow me to view the response. And uh, let's say, well, let me put in a mux here as well because I want to see the step change as well as, you know, the set point as well as the final result. Okay, and the output. Okay, so I want the input and the output. Looks like I missed that. Okay. And then I'm going to right click here for my step input, my, my, my uh, step change in my, in, my input for my. Well, I'm having a hard time getting that. Um, okay, so I drag that off, and I'm going to drag it in here. And then the scope will be the combination of those two, so it will show. Um, and it just readjusted my lines for me. Okay, actually it did not. It, it went all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to hit the control minus, and just see where that is going, and then just drag this line back over. So it just goes into the scope. Okay, now I need to uh, feed this back into the negative sign over here. And now I have my feedback control loop. And then I am viewing, um, I'm viewing my uh, set point and my PV value. And uh, let's simulate this. I, I'm going to go out to maybe 300 uh, seconds of simulation time. This has a time constant of 50 and a delay of 10. Uh, so let's just go up to, to 300 seconds here and see when this, okay, so it compiled and simulated. And I just have some default uh, PID. I didn't even change the uh, default PID. Okay, and you can see that's, uh, it's stable. Okay, so the, the, the peaks are, are diminishing. Um, but let me go ahead and just get rid of the integrator. Okay, and then we'll start with a uh, proportional only of uh, just the inverse of the gain. Um, that'll just be a good starting value for the proportional only controller. And if we simulate it again, I'll make this a little bit larger. We see that it is uh, that it in fact is stable. Okay. Um, okay. So now um, let's go ahead and and just start increasing the gain. Okay. So this is our uh, stability analysis. Uh, we can use a couple other approaches to obtain this, um, theoretically. Um, we don't just have to do the guess and check, okay, but we're just going to increase this um, more to 50, okay, so you can see it started to give some oscillations, and let me go up to 100, okay, so I'm just going to double that and go up to 100, and this is going to be um, unstable. Okay, so it's going to grow, in, uh, and you can see these, these peaks are just a little bit jagged here. So if you want to make them um, 
you know, just a little bit more smooth, you can come into these parameters, model configuration parameters. It's going to open this up, and that's just because the step size that the solver is taking might be uh, too large. I'm going to set the max step size to 1, and just give a little bit uh, smoother um, uh, plots here. Okay, so you can see that um, it actually even changed the answer a little bit. The, um, the integration error was accumulating because it was taking too large of steps. Okay, so that's just uh, maximum step size was 1. Uh, it slowed down my simulation a little bit, but overall it was very fast. Okay, so that was, that was too much. So let me go back down from 100, and um, let me go back down to 80. Okay, now this is going to be somewhere between 50 and 80 is the stability limit. You can see it still dampens out. Okay, so that's still stable. And um, if I increase it slightly to, let's go up to 85, and then simulate one more time. So for this system, this is the stability limit. The KC equals 85. So that was the upper limit. So what is the lower limit uh, for this case? Well, the lower limit is going to be KC equals 0. Okay, so if you put in anything like negative uh, 10, for example, it's going to be unstable. Um, okay, but it's just going to go to negative infinity. Um, so it's going to be a you have the wrong, uh, you know, reverse or direct acting for your PID controller or for your P-only controller. Okay, so we want to avoid that. So, um, okay, so let's go to tuning now. Um, let's say we had a starting value of 10, and then let me just use some, um, let's see, let's say I had 10 divided by 50 for my starting value for my integral. And so let's just see how this works uh, for tuning. Okay, so good tuning, but uh, we might be able to make it just a little bit more aggressive and uh, get it to the set point just a little bit faster. So I'm going to change this to 15, and then uh, let's do 15 over 50, and just see if we get just a little bit of overshoot. Okay, so that's just a little bit faster on the response. I can continue to increase that. Um, I'll go to 25. And at a certain point, we should see it start to um, overshoot. Okay, and then if I click the zoom, you can see I have maybe 5% uh, overshoot there and a very fast response for my controller. So one thing I recommend is to not do the tuning studies with the Arduino device. It's going to take a long time. Every time you want to run a step change, um, you know, it's going to have take a few minutes uh, to tens of minutes. So instead, do your tuning with the PID controller in Simulink. Uh, come up with acceptable values, and then um, you know, go ahead and implement them in, uh, in in on the Arduino device. Now, for this part, for the tuning, you will want to come in here to the PID Advanced and just limit the output. Okay, so let's say you're going 255 to zero. Um, and that'll make it just a little bit more realistic for the uh, for the controller. Okay, now it, it didn't look like it, it hit a, uh, a value there. You can plot this if you want to. You can see what the controller is doing with the... So I'm just going to copy the scope. Okay, open that up and copied it. I'll move it right up here. And I can see what it's doing with the voltage to the Arduino, okay? And uh, if I put that, if I open that up, you can see that it increased it to 30 and then back down to 10. Okay, so this is just a, a, a purely made up model. You'll have to put in the values that you you got from your FOPDT model. Um, and you can uh, do a stability analysis and then also do your controller tuning in Simulink and then finally implement that on your Arduino device.